Hi guys, Neff here, and this is Amnesia The Dark Descent. I'm playing this as part of my fictional game series, I've already done all of the Penumbra games, so if you haven't watched those videos you should go check them out. Again, I have played this game before, but it was quite a few years ago, and it was only once that I've played it, so I can remember some stuff, but a lot of it I've probably forgotten. So uh, we'll see how I get on. Alright, let's go. Don't forget, some things mustn't be forgotten. The shadow hunting me. I must hurry. My name is Daniel. I live in London at... at... Uh, Mayfair. What have I done? This is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... is... I am... Daniel. Okay. Okay, okay. Memento has been added to your journal. Follow the liquid trail and find its source. Oh shit. He's struggling. In the box. Okay, so for those of you who haven't played Amnesia or watched any videos of it before in the past, there is an insanity meter to the game where if you spend too much time in darkness or too much time looking at enemies, you eventually become more and more insane. Ooh, okay. So you have to collect the tinder boxes and try and keep everything as lit as possible to keep your sanity meter as high as you can. I think your sanity meter can replenish if you stay near light for a while, or if you generally just uh, progress through the game and unlock certain areas, then you will regain some of your sanity. Uh, let me just check in here before I just wander off. I can see where you're trying to lead me, but... Hey, this is why you check the corners. The other children cheered him on, his name voiced in a steadily rising pace, urging him to do it. Am I really doing this, the young boy thought, and struck his victim with a rock. Don't succumb to peer pressure, guys. It's very scary. Tinderbox. There's... Gimme, gimme. Oh, fuck a stock. Can I light something, please? Oh, thank you. Pick up a lantern. Um. Okay. 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 19th of August, 1839. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum. 
find Alexander and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. Okay. Seems legit. Um... He fell to the kitchen floor. Tears were beginning to well in his eyes as he received the first kick in his stomach. Hazel remained hidden in fear she too would be punished. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg. You hiss at me, I'm only saying hello. I don't think I can get. Ooh. Witnessing unsettling events will reduce your sanity. Um, I mean, the. Oh, okay, yeah, that is unsettling. I see what you mean now. Oh, God, okay. So, can I burn my way through this? Oh, we have notes. Some sort of organic tissue blocks the path to the refinery. Can it be dissolved? Okay. I see what's happening here. Check down here. Lab. The door slammed shut behind him and he knew he would never again see the old tailor at Berkeley Square. Another lone soul in London seemed appropriate somehow. I should probably use my tinder boxes a bit more than I currently am. Chemistry pot. More Let me see, let me see. And one part aqua force. One day I will return. If it wasn't for the thought of you, my love, I wouldn't be able to go on. When I find myself doing terrible things, I take comfort in you. As long as I am able to think of you and long for a life together, I know I'm better than the others. I weep for them. They lust for power without restraint, where I only crave fair judgement and a safe return. Save! Okay. This is my third attempt to produce artificial vitae. The former compounds lack the potency I need, but I sense I'm close. Calamine and orpiment are a given, and the cuprate binds them well. This time I will attempt aqua regia instead of aqua fortis, in hopes it will produce a more even solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. The solution is highly acid and proves impractical to put to any use except as a detergent. Organic tissue reacts especially violently to the solution and should be handled with the greatest care. I might be able to use the recipe, but I'm losing hope that I will find an alchemic solution to my predicament. Four chemicals can create a powerful acid. So I have the pot, but I need the four chemicals. 
Oh Christ. That didn't help my sanity. Let's turn this back on. Actually, let me like this and then turn this off. There we go. Chemical relocation. The lack of a chimney to properly vent the fumes from my most recent experiments has taken its toll on many of my less stable ingredients in storage. Some seem unaffected, but many are stained by the fumes and will be difficult to salvage. I shall do what I can and move them to the wine cellar. So... Where's the wine cellar? I'll get back to you later. It's locked and it will not open without a key. Uh, archives. Somebody there? I don't think so. 16th of May, 1839. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Wilhelm's Contract. I hereby offer my full attention and services to Alexander, Baron of Brennenberg. This contract will reign for a total of three years when my freedom shall return to me. In addition, Alexander, Baron of Brennenberg, is to recommend my services at the Prussian Royal Court and within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break this seal. Wilhelm, House of Gerrick. Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Dun dun dun. See, I know I'm supposed to be getting spooked about all of these noises I can hear, but I know that there's nothing around here yet, so... Your power of suggestion will not work on me. It won't open, it's locked. Uh... See, there's nothing there. old and has 
hasn't been attempted to for centuries. When the shadow arrives, it won't take long until things start falling apart. We're just buying time anyway. Let's do what we can. There isn't much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. So how's my sanity looking? Head is pounding and hands are shaking. Oh god. Um... Okay. So could be doing better. What's it over here? Fragile, but not breakable by hand. I mean, okay. Sure, can I pick up a rock? Well, that took very little effort. Ooh. Um, okay, good night. 17th of May, 1839. After pounding the unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away. Unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted. The voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety. And grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel. Okay, so I need to pull books in the right order. Let me just... Let me just light some stuff up. Okay, um, can I smash this with a thing? Local folklore. Alstad and Brennenberg Castle, 1801. Another region rich with lore is Alstad, deep within the East Prussian woods. For centuries there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbour, Castle Brennenberg. The quiet, forest-clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque as can be, albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travellers should indulge themselves in such conversations since it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motifs that keep reappearing. The Gatherers. This story reaches all the way back to the time of the Thirty Years' War. It is said that soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold dark woods and were forever damned to roam the grounds. Their bodies wrought by their tainted souls have left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have sighted them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers as they seem to follow some ambition to steal living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap sacks, dragged behind them which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? A visit undone. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, the well-known erudite, visited Elstadt at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for remnants of kingdoms past. During his stay, all the prominent members of society paid notice 
and he is mentioned in many records of the time. One day he went to investigate a burrow in the northwestern glades only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Elstad, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who was this mysterious man who visited the sleepy hamlet in the woods and what happened to him? The Immortal Baron The Baron of Brennenburg lives a reclusive life with his family at his castle nearby Elstad, and like most those of noble birth, rumours are inherited alongside with the title. Researching the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands claiming the role as protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region to flourish and remained popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to lineage and heritage, therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully recorded. This has fed to the idea that the Baron is in fact the one and the same who came from the West over 300 years ago, lived through the time of occupation and joined the coveted order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of this country. Okay, so I'm pulling some books in a certain order is basically what's about to happen. So there's one there, one there, let me just quickly get this out, okay so there's one there as well, is there any more? There's one, two, three I guess, okay, so one, Two, three. I don't know if that had to be done in the right order or not. I, I have no idea. Um, okay, we have a key to the wine cellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Uh, any tinder boxes or oil? Oh, another note. Regarding closing of the wine cellar. Wilhelm and his fools have endangered my research long enough with their absent-minded handling of the human vessels. The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It's just a matter of time until they follow my trail to Brennenburg. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to avoid further investigation from the public. The wine cellar will therefore be sealed off until the matter has been handled. Either the king's men leave or they will starve. Whatever comes first, they can rot for all I care. Maybe I will feed them some wine. It would, in a sense, solve both of my problems. Okay, to the wine cellar. Um, oh. So that happened. Must find a new way out of this area. Okay, so it's not going to be there or anything over here. Oh, I see. This opened. Okay, that's handy. Hi! Are you permanently gonna hang out here or were you just a glimpse? I know, buddy. Um, I can't remember how to get out. Is it here? Entrance hall. There we go. Alright. Oh god, what? Okay. So now I can head to the wine cellar now that I have the key. Okay. Yep, okay, okay, okay. Uh, 
Um, any more? There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, no, maybe. Um, okay. Nope. What's happening? Oh, it feels like my chest is going to burst. Oh. My God, Wilhelm, do something! Except it. We're not getting out of here. How can you say that? Alexander, you piece of shit! Let us out of here! <laughs> yeah, Alexander, you piece of shit. So there's got to be a chemical here. Wilhelm's last words. My name is Wilhelm. House of Garrick, these are my final words, my confession and testament. Two years ago, I was summoned to Castle Brennenberg. As most of the aristocracy, I was curious about what this supposed knight of the order would want from me and accepted the invitation. The baron was friendly and offered me a proposition. It dawned on me that the nature of the contract was sordid and that the reason I was chosen was because of the follies of my past and not the honours I've been rewarded with during my time as a soldier. I was to kidnap healthy humans upon his slightest whim and do so without asking questions. In return, he would attest to my character at the royal court, advancing my position within noble society. I would like to claim that I struggled with my decision, but it came swiftly and I accepted wholeheartedly. Ever since that day, I've brought men, women and children to Brennenberg. I can't remember the numbers, but there were many, perhaps even a hundred, none of whom were ever seen or heard from again. Tonight the Baron invited me and my men down to the wine cellar to celebrate our work. I had my suspicions as we descended the stairs, but he insisted and joined us in a toast. The wine tasted fine and my men drank without restraint. So begins the punishment for our sins. The Baron has locked us up and returned upstairs. Forgive me for what I have done, I was weak and fell into his diabolic ways. My men are screaming, their skin has been pierced by their own tangled bones. I feel my insides revolt against their god-given nature. Blood has begun to pour from my eyes and I can no longer. He cannot even. Know what's in here? That noise it just made sounded really like the, um, the big daddies from Bioshock. So that's locked. If an enemy is near, stay out of sight, hide in the darkness, make sure to turn off the lantern. Alright. Oh, fuck. Can you hurry up and go away? Dude, come on. I mean... I know I'm trying to avoid looking at him, but he's not going away. There we go. How am I doing? Well, I mean, you know, I feel like I've had better days. This is fine. Don't go. There we go. I've healed a little bit. Crystal clear. So that problem resolved itself quite quickly. So I have the four chemicals. So do I need to get back to the chemistry room to go and mix them, I suppose? Um, I'm going to assume that he's just sort of like not really around here and just run for it. Um, okay, okay. So I have the chemistry pot. Goes... There, thank you so much. And then we, I'm assuming that this isn't any particular order. Oh, it is, but they do it for me. Ooh. 
We did it! Pot of acid and my health should be... All is good. That's amazing. So, just confirmed that if, uh, you know, your mental health isn't doing so good, just make a pot of acid and it will... Clear you right up! Oh! I see, I see what happened here. Piece of cake. Okay. Be gone. It sure is dark in here. Yes, and there's a good reason for it. But you can light the lamp now if you wish. What's the reason? For the darkness, that is. Stay close. Be careful not to stray. What's the reason? Why is it so dark? Pay attention, Daniel. Yeah, it's Daniel. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. Okay. I have seen way too much derpy fan art of this enemy to ever take him seriously. Like, at this point, he's just cute. I can't even be, like, scared of him at all. Oh, that's, that's good. That's not good. Is that him? Or is that just... 22nd of June, 1839. It's been more than a month since my last entry. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision, in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together, as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? Uh, head is pounding, hands are shaking. Arms are sweaty. It's blocked from the other side. This leads back to the central hall area, yep. Oh, this is Sol. Oil. Nice. So I need to lift this up by doing something with this. It's stuck. Something is clogging the crank pulley contraption. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, before I go down there, let me just check around the room. 25th of June, 1839. I feel the need to continue this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. Uh, so let me go back in here. 